<laughs> On the Deputy matter Speaker. of private member statements, I do call the member for Upper Hunter. Thank you, Mr uh, Deputy Speaker. I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the drought uh, that New South Wales and in particular the Upper Hunter is uh, suffering at the moment. And I'd like to offer uh, potentially a couple of ideas that, um, uh, that may, uh, I suppose, bring to the fore some practical aspects and understanding uh, of uh, the plight of the farmer in the rural communities in, in the Upper Hunter, but, all, but not just the Upper Hunter, right around New South Wales or regional New South Wales. Of course, in the last 24 hours or so, it has been uh, uh, declared that 100 per cent of New South Wales uh, is in drought. And whilst I recognise and I understand that uh, media outlets, uh, communities based in Sydney, uh, and communities are rallying together to support the farmer and the farming families and the farming communities, one of the practical aspects I think uh, that would be of significant benefit, given that 100% of the state is in drought, uh, and about a third of it in severe uh, drought, um, is that if, for example, the water uh, restrictions were put in place in Sydney and metropolitan areas of, say, level five restrictions, that would give a significant practical understanding of the impact of a lack of water that, that a lack of water has on our farming and rural communities. In addition to that, of course, it will have a practical saving uh, to uh, ensure that we conserve as much water as possible for as long as possible because we don't know when it's going to rain again sufficiently enough to be able to, in our catchments, to be able to uh, fill our dams and replenish the water stocks that we are relying upon, not only in Sydney and metropolitan areas but uh, right around uh, New South Wales. And of course, one of the things that has been uh, brought to the attention of the, uh, the wider public is the lack of, uh, because of the lack of rain, the lack of ability to be able to grow feed for stock, whether it be cattle or sheep or uh, animals that graze uh, in paddocks. There's simply very little or nothing for them to be able to graze upon. And again, the community has rallied well to be able to uh, source as much fodder as possible uh, to be able to, and, and most of it now is brought in from uh, interstate, and indeed um, uh, certain uh, uh, organisations are looking at the potential for importing fodder uh, from uh, other countries to be able to feed our core breeding stock uh, that is so important to be able to hold on to uh, in order to have uh, our ability to be able to recover from the drought to happen quicker than it may have otherwise. If we lose our breeding stock, it will be somewhere between four and five years before farmers and farming communities see sufficient levels of activity to be able to generate an income to be able to start to recover. So it's very, very important that we do everything we possibly can to maintain our core breeding stock. The government has put some measures in place. Uh, indeed, people can access uh, genetic storage, uh, but uh, that in itself uh, is, is going to add to the time of recovery. But one of the things that I think the government should seriously consider, and this week I wrote to the uh, uh, Environment Minister, uh, the Honourable uh, uh, Gabrielle Upton, uh, to have the government consider giving access to farmers for grazing purposes to national parks. Now, it wouldn't necessarily be suitable everywhere, but I know in my electorate of Upper Hunter, I'm fortunate enough to have the Barrington Tops in the electorate, and it's around about 124,000 hectares. Now, let's say, for example, only 20,000 hectares of that was suitable for the farmers who, are, who may be nearby to be able to utilise for having, or to be able to put their breeding stock on, their core breeding stock, to be able to uh, keep them alive, fat and healthy. I would think, quite frankly, that that would have the support of people right across New South Wales. It may not have the support of the Greens, and that's okay, I don't have a problem with that, because that's a fight worth having. The fight that we need to have, though, it really need to have, is we need to stand up for our farmer, we need to think long term, and we need to think about how we can 
put measures in place now to be able to pr protect our breeding stock for a quicker recovery. And let's face it, fat cattle are better than big fires in national parks.